Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another Transformers review. But before I get started, I need you guys to do me a favor. If you're watching this video right here and are not a subscriber of Patriot Prime Reviews, please hit that subscribe button right now. It won't cost you a thing, but will help me and my channel out tremendously. Also, make sure and visit my sponsor, ToyHacks.com. ToyHacks provides reproduction and upgrade decal sets for Transformer toys from Generation 1 to the latest modern figures. Make sure and stop by the ToyHacks Armory, where they can equip your figures with new weaponry in multiple colors, and Toy Stages provides backdrops for figure displays and photography. Each purchase with Toy Hacks earns you RoboSense that can be used for future purchases. You can check your balance anytime in your cart. Toy Hacks is a company run by collectors for collectors. So check out ToyHacks.com and make your collection stand out from the rest. And tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Now, on to the review. In this review, I wrap up my Generation 1 Coneheads with 1985's Ramjet. Now, Ramjet hitting the toy shelves in 1985 more or less guaranteed his appearance in the animated television show, and he made his debut in the Season 2 episode, Dinobot Island. Now, Ramjet continued on to be a staple character throughout all of Season 2 and parts of Season 3, but a standout episode of mine was a Decepticon Raider in King Arthur's Court where Ramjet punched a horse. Yes, Ramjet punched a horse. And that so reminded me of the scene from Blazing Saddles where Mongo punched a horse. Hey, you can't park that animal over there. It's illegal. I'm willing to lay down some money that I am the only Transformers reviewer on YouTube that has used a clip from Blazing Saddles in a Transformers review. Now, Ramjet made his very first appearance in Marvel Comics in issue number 17, where it was shown that he was one of Lord Strax's enforcers on Cybertron. Ramjet then arrived on Earth along with Thrust and Dirge in issue number 21, where he assisted Megatron with an attack on Hoover Dam. And within that same issue, fell victim to Air Raid's torque rifle, which twisted up his nose cone. So I thought that was pretty neat how Marvel actually showed how some of the various Transformer weapons work. And that was pretty much it for Ramjet. He just appeared periodically throughout the entire series and was nothing more than a background character. So enough of the history of the figure. Let's take a look at this awesome Generation 1 toy. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. <laughs> In vehicle mode, Ramjet is a modified F-15 fighter jet with new wings that kind of resemble a Lockheed Martin F-16 XL. I absolutely love this jet. He is awesome looking. This is an original Generation 1 and is in perfect condition. Though he does show just a little bit of sticker wear, these are the original decals from 1985. I am very proud to have this figure in my collection. I mean, he is pristine and white. Most white Transformers tend to discolor with age, but not my Ramjet here. Now, taking a closer look at the figure, he shares the exact same body type as the rest of the Seekers but it's the wings that give him a unique look. They're maroon wings with a kind of downward slant at the tips with tail fins on the outside with kind of molded in thrusters right there, which really give Ramjet a unique look. I mean, he looks kind of like a bullet, which makes sense considering his bio is he could fly right through things. Now, Ramjet has some outstanding weaponry. He's got these huge bombs or missiles attached underneath the wings, which is really something different for a seeker. Now, according to his bios, those are cluster bombs, but I think it looks more like a big old bunker buster missile. So it looks really cool 
on Ramjet. Right here, he does have a tinted canopy that can open and close, just like so. You can use that to store the landing gear in. And of course, in the original Japanese toy, that's where the Diaclone pilot would sit. The great thing about these Seekers is this black section right here that pretty much starts from the middle all the way up here to the end is die cast metal, and that is great. They just don't make them like that anymore, which really makes this a fantastic jet. I love this jet mode. This is awesome. And now since we have Ramjet here, let's compare him to the other two Conehead Seekers. Thrust and Dirge, and man, do those three look great together. Now let's go ahead and get Ramjet transformed into robot mode. And the first thing we're gonna do is remove the landing gear. Then we're gonna remove the wings, place those over to the side. Right here, we're gonna take the nose cone, bend down, get your fingers underneath here, and push these sections out, which will form the robot arms. Then we're gonna take the nose cone once again on the front, bend it down, bend it through and around the chest, bringing the head up and fold this section down. Down here on the bottom, we're gonna flip out the feet, take the wings, we're gonna remove the bombs off the bottom. And with the wings here, you wanna face the section with the tail fin forward, so the Decepticon symbol is facing out. Make sure this goes on the other side of the arm here. Get the other one. This one does have some loose, floppy arms, though, so bear with me. So there we got the wings attached. Now we're going to attach his fists. They are right and left, so you want to make sure you have the right ones attached. Get the fists attached here. You're going to take the bombs, and these are actually going to peg in to the holes right there on the arms, just like where the weapons go on the other Seekers. And now finally, if you so choose, open up this canopy, take the landing gear, put the wheels in first, get the peg section up here at the top, shut that up, and there we have Ramjet in robot mode. And like the other cone heads, this figure looks great. I love the color scheme. He is so pristine and white, and these big massive weapons on the side of his arms really make him quite the presence on your Decepticon shelf. Once again, great sticker decals that have still held up through all these years, and I just, I really like the color scheme on this guy. I love how he looks. Now, mine is a little floppy right here. It doesn't really connect there at the bottom, but it is what it is. Now, of course, in the Generation 1 cartoon and comic book, Ramjet is shown as a cone head. And just like the other two, you can achieve that look by bringing the cone up. So now he's more cartoon or comic accurate. The instructions, of course, show him to be transformed just like that. But we'll do that for the sake of, hey, it's G1. That's how he looked in the cartoons. Once again, I hate the gold decals on Seeker eyes. I just, I wish they were red or something else. Not a big fan, but still, it's G1. What are you gonna do? Articulation for Ramjet. The arms can do a complete 360 if these wings weren't in the way, and the wings can go back and forth so you can display them how you choose. All in all, another fantastic Generation 1 figure to add to your collection. And now for some quick size comparisons, here is 1985's Generation 1 Ramjet with Generation 1 Megatron, Classics Ramjet, and they even gave Classics Ramjet big old honking weapons on his arms as well, and Earthrise Ramjet. Now, I do wish they gave Earthrise Ramjet the big weapons on his arms, but I do believe there are some third-party companies making those for him. 1985's Generation 1 Ramjet is another fantastic Generation 1 figure. I mean, this character is a classic. 
It's got a fantastic color scheme, a very unique looking jet mode, and it will just look amazing on your shelf. Now that I'm finally wrapping up my Generation 1 Conehead reviews, let me give you my final thoughts on these three figures. Even though the Coneheads share the exact same body style as Starscream, Thundercracker, and Skywarp, their unique wing designs, their different weapons, and their color scheme really make these three stand out. I think they stand out way more than the 1984 Seekers. All three jet modes are fantastic and very unique, and the robot modes do look different enough that you really can't tell that they use the same body style unless you look. So there you go, guys, 1985's Generation 1 Ramjet with Thrust and Dirge. So, does a Generation 1 Ramjet belong in your collection? Absolutely. If you're a Generation 1 collector, you have to have the Coneheads. They were staples in the animated show, and they actually look great on your shelf. I love his collar scheme. I mean, he's a white Decepticon. I really don't think we have any other white Decepticons, and that white and burgundy look so good together, not to mention he's got a fantastic jet mode and these awesome massive weapons. So yes, you see a ramjet, pick him up, you are not going to be disappointed. Now guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new reviews. Once again, this is Patriot Prime, signing out. Hello!